Welcome to Pi Excellence Tutorials. And um, we are going to look at uh, circular motion. Now, first of all, have you subscribed to the YouTube channel yet? If you have not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, kindly subscribe to the YouTube channel by Excellence Tutorials for new, fresh, updated physics videos. And soon we're going to start also updating mathematics videos. Yes, so don't forget even to click on the notification bell so that you get notified each and every time I post a new video. Okay, so we have a question involving a roller coaster with a circular vertical loop. Yeah, so we are asked to show that uh, on a roller coaster with a vertical loop, the difference between apparent weight at the top of the loop and uh, the bottom of the circular loop is 6 mg, that is six times your weight. Ignore friction. I can show also that uh, as long as your speed is above the minimum needed, this answer does not depend on the size of the loop or how fast you go through it. Okay, so I have drawn there a rough diagram about uh, this roller coaster. Okay, so we, we have this roller coaster at two different points at the at the top and at the bottom. So now we the first thing that we have to do is to calculate or to get the velocity uh, of the roller coaster at the top. Okay. With what velocity will this roller coaster make it to the top? And we also know that for this roller coaster to make it to the top, okay, the, the normal force, this is the normal force here, the normal force when it is at the top or on the top, no, at the top, head on. So the, the, the speed or the normal force must become zero for this roller coaster to make it with a minimum speed. Okay, so the According to Newton's second law, okay, what we are going to have here, so this is our centripetal acceleration. So the summation of forces, we have normal force plus the weight giving us mhc. So centripetal acceleration is given as uh, V squared over R. So it can be, okay, I've used, capturator error here. Okay, so we are saying this must be equal to zero for this roller coaster to make it to the top with a minimum speed. Okay, so we're going to have mg being equal to mv squared over r. So those cancels and v squared is equal to rg. So v is basically rg. So this is at the top, so you can put the subscript there to show that it's the velocity at the top. Okay, so this is going to be the velocity at the top. Okay, so now, just to create space. So now we have to also calculate the velocity, the speed with which it's going to have at the bottom, okay. What would be the speed which is going, this is going to have at the bottom? So how do we get the speed at the bottom? So we get the speed by using the principle of conservation of energy, okay. So the principle of conservation of energy, so the summation of energy at the top will be equal to the summation of energies at the bottom. So what we have, we have energy at the top being equal to energy at the bottom. So at the top, we are going to have the kinetic energy 
and potential energy at the top there equal to kinetic energy at the bottom. We're not going to have the potential energy here. So, and this is R, R, so H equal to two R, okay? So we have half MV and this B is velocity at the top plus MGH, okay, and MV. This is velocity at the bottom, which we are looking for. Okay, so we're going to see that the masses, they go, and we're going to have half. V squared at the top, we've already calculated, and V squared is actually RG, that's V squared. Then we add G, our H is two R. So we have two R there, equal to half V squared, and this is the bottom velocity. So what we have here is like 0 0.5 RG plus two RG equal to half V squared at the bottom, okay? So, this is going to give us 2.5 RG being equal to half V squared at the bottom. So we, we multiply by two, the whole equation, and then we're going to have that going, and we have five RG being equal to V squared at the bottom. So V squared, velocity at the bottom. I mean, okay. You can say velocity at the bottom is going to be equal to root of five RIG. So this is going to be our velocity at the bottom. So now, what would be the apparent weight now? Having this velocity at the bottom influenced by the initial, the velocity at the top. What would be the, 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 the normal force, which happens to be the apparent weight. So at the bottom here, we are going to have, we have uh, the normal force subtracting mg, okay, the weight giving us mfc. Okay, so the normal force is basically equal to mc plus mg. So we know that the, the centripetal acceleration is given by that. So we have the velocity at the bottom. Use the velocity at the bottom here plus mg. So velocity at the bottom, we can substitute uh, v squared is actually, uh, v squared is actually five RG. So we have five M RG over R. So, okay, sorry, I used small letter R here. Okay, so plus MG. So R and R goes, so we have the normal force being equal to 5mg plus mg. Okay, so this goes this side, and then we have Fn, which is apparent, it's going to be 6mg. Okay, so we've, we've shown that the apparent weight is six times than the, the normal weight, okay, at the bottom. So when you look at this uh, apparent weight, you are going to see that it's, it's, it has, there is, no, there is only mass and uh, gravitational acceleration. 
it's it doesn't depend on the radius of the loop. There's no radius in that uh, equation or in the answer that we found. There's no radius in that equation. There's no velocity in that equation. The only thing that we have at the end is mg, 6mg. So we can be able to say that it doesn't depend on the radius or the size of the loop. Thank you so much for watching. If uh, you like uh, the video, or you've gotten help, please give it a like and comment. That will be the feedback that I'll be waiting for. Thank you so much.